Have you ever heard of the role-playing game The Morrow Project? Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. I've only played one session of The Morrow Project and that was back when the first edition of The Morrow Project came out and I've I purchased the copy of the first edition and I can't seem to find it. I remember having it and it is probably one of the most difficult games to set up as a game master and I'll explain what it, it's not the mechanics it's thinking about what you're doing okay so the moral project is a post-apocalyptic world but it is one of the most gritty and realistic post-apocalyptic worlds that I've ever seen it's makes most everything else look so wildly unrealistic that it's hard to imagine. The combat system in the Moral Project is extremely deadly, um, both giving and taking. You kill things easily and things kill you very easily. And it's that the Moral Project is set up, you are part of the Moral Project, which were designed to uh, be after a major after World War III, you were the ones who were supposed to come out shortly thereafter and help rebuild the world. But something went wrong, and your bolt hole, which is where you went to to shelter in, you were supposed to go into cryogenic stasis for a short period of time. I can't remember how long it was, but something goes wrong, and you don't come out for 150 years. So you come out. Now let's talk about why it is hard as a game master to set up. The mechanics are not hard, it's just thinking about what you're doing. And what are you doing? To start your world, you get a world map. Okay, great. That's easy. You go, the Russians have X number of missiles, nuclear missiles, and this is how many warheads they have. And the United States has this many missiles and this many warheads, and these are the yield of each of those. Plot where they land. Here's the list of military targets, here's the list of civilian targets, figure out where the nukes come down on. This makes you pause for a second and think about what you're doing. You go, okay, are they trying to take out military installations, or are they going to try and take out civilian population, or a mixture, and where do you land? Now, when I did this, I lived in Utah. I was in uh, South Salt Lake. And then you sit there and you go, oh, hell, it doesn't matter where these bombs drop. Is I got Hill Air Force Base up in Ogden. I got Dugway Proving Grounds, which has its own interesting problems if you nuke it. And you have Tula, Tula Ordnance Depot. And you have a whole bunch of interesting targets in Salt Lake. First off, if you, if you know anything about Salt Lake, Salt Lake is built on a lake bed. And if uh, you have anything like... Um, uh, for seven uh, on the seven on the Richter scale earthquake, if we ever get one, and we're expecting they're expecting one one day, all the buildings in the valley will sink because it will liquefy the 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 valley floor because it's just sand and water. So they'll all just sink. That has happened in other places. If, so if you know anything about the geology of Salt Lake, that's a problem. But if you nuke it, oh well, that will do it too. And so there will not be a single building left standing in Salt Lake after a nuke attack, if you hit um, Dugway Proving Ground, which is a nice target, because that's where the United States um, has much of its chemical arsenal. People don't realize that. I remember when I was a young man, when there, there was the, the winds changed, and uh, one, this was when we were doing above ground, open air testing of chemical weapons, and we killed thousands upon thousands of sheep because the winds shifted and the uh, nuclear agent went over and killed all these sheep yeah that that i remember that seeing the bulldozers dozing the sheep and burying them in mass because yeah any but that's so if you nuke dugway proving ground um <clears throat> that causes other interesting issues of what happens to all the chemical weapons that are there and you basically make the Salt Lake Valley uninhabitable, but over 150 years that changes things. And you f and you plot, and when you do the 
the layout, you have to make decisions. And it teaches you a bit more about nuclear weapons than most people know. Not me. I, I, I thought about going in. My dream career when I was in high school was to go to, uh, to work in weapons research at Los Alamos Laboratories, designing new and more interesting nukes. But um, that, that didn't, I didn't do that. I got seduced by computers, shall we say. But uh, so I, I knew a little bit about nukes and how they work, and uh, that was reinforced when I was in the military, and I became a uh, chemical NBC um, working with, so you had to learn how to plot fallout. And people don't understand that there are, you do, you have air burst, surface burst, and subsurface bursts. Now, subsurface burst is normally... Most bombs don't do subsurface bursts unless you're trying to take out a um, missile silo because uh, the, that means that the, the weapon is designed to penetrate the ground for a period of, de of a certain depth before it goes off. And those are the worst. They put out the, that puts the most fallout into the air. If you do an air burst, air burst are almost have no fallout because it explodes in the air and if you are in range of the radiation if you see the burst which means you're in range of the radiation then that's it's just the initial radiation burst and there's not much fallout as the saying goes that there's not that it doesn't produce a fallout cloud it's a bright burst but you have to plot this when you plan out the Morrowind and this is what you have to learn a little bit about because then you plot the based upon the winds where the fallout goes so where the radioactive areas are and then unlike gamma world or some of the other pro things your mutations are much that happen are much more realistic based upon science you that they're nowhere you don't get the the really wild mutations that you see in gamma world or in some of the other post-apocalyptic they're much more shall we say natural type like you would have much larger wolves you get back to dire wolves that are much larger that would that would be out there which would which would be almost a natural occurrence when they're unleashed on the world and because when you've killed off most of the humans from from that that they would probably survive and they may become larger but you run into things like that that are out there and it's a very gritty um, type of adventure and I'd say I'd love to play it I'd love to run into it and I was debating about buying a copy it's available on Amazon it's a link down in there but the problem I it fall this falls into one of those games that I've one of the th criteria that I want for a role-playing game I want to be able to find players and I went looking on this and I went looking like on Reddit in various places and finding people who've got the book the I ran into two which is sort of discouraging there aren't many people who are really that interested in this in this game so that's why I decided not to I'll save my money and spend it on something else rather than spending it on the moral project but I'd love to find that if you're interested give me some comments because maybe I will buy it and maybe try and run it through Google Hangouts and so on if people are interested but I haven't seen that much interest it's a it's a fascinating book at least from what I've read of the reviews the original was a small this goes back first edition I don't know much about the second or third edition but the first edition was a fairly small book and it was uh, uh, not many rules, uh, not very rule heavy, shall we say, that you had lots and lots of tables and charts and things like that in there and how to create your world and so on. That's my recollection of the game. But, um, and, and the current book is over 300 pages long. It's a massive tome. The, the hard, there's a hardback and a paperback version on Amazon. And I would be interested in doing it. It's a lot of setup and you have to really think about what you're doing because you're talking about plan <laughs> planning the destruction of the world. And I mean that because you have to figure out where all the nukes would go and what would happen and so on and it's an interesting interesting game. 
in that sense. So give me your comments. If you're interested, maybe I'll put a, I'll spend the money and go set up a campaign of it. But it's one of those very different campaigns because it's very, shall we say militaristic, let's be honest, because you're playing a military group that comes back out and often you come out with heavy weapons, machine guns and things like that, that are not, there's no, I don't remember any, you know, um, ray guns or anything like that. You were, had standard weaponry and you were going after other bolt holes, which were the other places where there would be caches of resources for you that had been planned for rebuilding and so on. And you had to see how they'd survived or degraded over 150 years. So I'd love to hear some comments. Thank you for watching. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.